Michiel. And Michiel is a creative technologist at Handmade. And Handmade is an uh, agency in Amsterdam where they make uh, prototypes that where the physical and digital world is combined. And uh, they developed a special at um, technology or not technology like a method. Uh, where they make a prototype within one week, uh, where they can test everything on it. And that's called Rudy, and he will tell you much more about it. And Sophie, can you please... Uh... Okay. <laughs> Welcome everyone. So today I'm hopefully going to tell you about three things. I will introduce you guys to Rudy. I will explain a little bit more what unicorns are. And of course, I'll explain how we build smart prototypes fast. But first, a little bit about Handmade. Handmade is a product innovation lab where we build physical and uh, digital product experiences. And we build, we work with uh, a wide variety of technology and we build experiences for a diverse set of markets. So the type of work we do ranges from smart earbuds, to uh, wearables, voice assistants, and also a lot of future car development. So this is only a glimpse of the things I'm actually allowed to show, because most of the stuff is in a non disclosure And all the work we do is for Fortune 500 clients, and they basically ask us to do three things. There's an invent phase, where we come up with new product ideas and concepts. There's a proof phase, where we materialize these concepts and bring them to life. And there's an accelerate phase where we built a more robust and high fidelity uh, prototype. So I roughly joined Handmade one year ago and I was really amazed to see that we house a very diverse collective of both designers and developers. And basically everyone is an inventor, but together we cover the whole design spectrum. So from first ID to milled aluminium and self-written code. And nowadays a designer who also writes codes is called a unicorn. <laughs> and having all these unicorns under, uh, under one roof is what allows us to build product experiences where the physical beautifully merges together with the digital. So our usual prototype setup consists of a piece of industrial design where we have hardware to the modeling, also UI UX where we build apps in Sketch, there's a system software where we write advanced code in Python, C Sharp, C++, there's microcontrollers in the likes of Teensies, Arduinos and Raspberry Pis, luckily everybody knows those, and of course a whole bunch of sensors to make things really kick in. And we, at Handmade, we specialize, uh, so all these facets together allows us to build an end-to-end -end product experience. And this is what I call a unicorn prototype. And at Handmade, we, uh, what we specialize in is to build these unicorn prototypes fast. So we build them in weeks and not months. So I'm going to show you one small project we did in eight weeks, which is a voice assistant app that helps users throughout the cooking process. Hey puppy, how should I cut the onions? You should dice them, but not too fine. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see here a voice recognition app, interactive light, uh, custom PCBs, the whole design around it, just in eight weeks. So, how do we do this? We do not stand still and we continuously try to improve on our own process while working on projects. And very often uh, we also do internal projects and one of them is the smart water tap. This is a, uh, was done during the spring sprints uh, where we did an internal research and development sprints with small teams. And to be in lead with technology we continue, always try to improve ourselves on self-initiated projects. And with the smart water tap, our goal was to make a very dumb product like a tap we use very often a bit smarter. So you come to ideas that where you hold the, the glass underneath the crane, it will automatically pour water. And a little bit further ahead, you have a voice assistant, a voice controlled water tap where you can talk to the tap and let the water pour down and also regulate the, the temperature. And even further, we have 
a crane that can detect the type of object that's put underneath and then it will pour the right amount of water based on what it detects. So having all the results in house makes us really excited like yeah let's build the most advanced stuff we can. Let's build an object recognition system, let's build uh, a flow regulator, temperature control and everything. But each team member in a project like this can easily spend eight weeks on their own little island perfecting their little thing. And at Handmade we do things a little bit different. And we do it so different that we even gave it a silly name. So let's meet Rudy. Rudy is our approach for a rudimentary prototype where all the disciplines are tied together to create one boring but functional uh, working prototype. <coughs> And it's, make, it's about making all the sensors connect to each other, talk to the software, and put everything in a half-decent 3D print. And to build a Rudy, you choose only one functionality to work out. So in case of the water tap, we just have to open and close it in a digital way. So now the product designer will make a mount for a motor to switch a valve. The creative technologist will control the, the motor with a microcontroller. And the, the developer will make a Python program that connects to this microcontroller. And what you end up with is a hacked water tap on the top floor of our building, where you can see a very funky sort of plumbing with a connected uh, stepper motor that uh, switches a valve with a whole bunch of wires that run out of it and go to the computer app. Hmm. And we always ask yourself, is this the smartest and quickest way to build it? So if, if you have off-the-shelf components lying around in your office, just use it and go for it. And if it doesn't work with one technology, then jump to the next one and try again. And this is what we always ask ourselves every day. So to continue, there's a distance sensor on the, on the tap water and a small camera module to see what's uh, going on there. And then behold, the first Rudy is born. So, it's a tryout, but the team succeeded in making a, a mi uh, with minimum effort, a maximum effect prototype. So we can open and close the water tap, and now we can continue again. And what's cool about making uh, a Rudy like this is that you come across a lot of edge cases. Like for instance, if the glass is already halfway full, what will the system do then if he just stops pouring the whole glass? And like a good friend of me once told me, the key to great usability is a bad usability. <laughs> and what you notice is that if you design the full system end to end, you will come across so many edge cases and it will trigger your mind in deciding which edge cases to design for. Because if you want to make a smooth prototyping experience, you want to uh, design for these edge cases. But at the same time, you also want to avoid the ones you cannot design or you want to uh, avoid. So in other words, it helps us uh, decide what to make and what to fake with cardboard or with electronics. And then in the second iteration of Rudy, uh, every person of the team member will start to iterate in their own island. The whole system is set up, so now the creative technologists can make a more advanced control system for the water. There's a health sensor to detect the amount of water, and there's a more professional valve to actually open and close it in a sharper way. While the developer can work on actual object recognition and train his data to eventually create a Python app that detects each object and based on that he can send a command to the microcontroller and dispense the right amount of water. And in his turn the product designer can work on the physical uh, knob which allows the user to override the amount of water he dispenses. So everything comes again in a beautiful product render but more importantly a prototype that gives you the feel and nuances of what a smart world tap can do. And on the light ring on the top, you can see uh, how much is dispensed. So, our tea cake takeaways on this build Rudy's, 
This will allow you to, in the first week, already create a whole system. Always ask yourself, what is the smartest way to uh, build an experience? And also, build the experience and not do a showcase of techno uh, technological capabilities. Thank you. <coughs>
a, a, a compromise because we think in very advanced systems. Mm -hmm. So I guess at some point where we say we fake it, it's uh, because you don't want to hold, build a whole technological system behind it, you do it in a quicker way. For example, in one project I want to show where if you switch off your phone, uh, the light switches off. So what we faked is that instead of making a whole room where the light switches off, we put a monitor there and then we have two pictures and then if you flip a phone, you see the picture of the, the room change into a darkness. And then we had like a little cardboard stand standing out of the, the, the screen just to make a feel of a room. Mm. But it, 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 gets, uh, it gets the idea across because you can still flip a phone to turn off the light. Uh, thanks for your talk. Um, I assume that at Handmade this is a process that has been refined over time and something that you work on to uh, refine as a process. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips for, for example, someone like me that wants to introduce this kind of work, uh, making broodies, uh, within a company that doesn't do so right now? Uh then my question would also be, does your company have like a lot of uh, multiple disciplines working yes, and collaborating? Yes. Not product design, but animation, filmmaking, app development, web yeah. development. I, th I think the, the best question, so we did design sprints as well, where we uh, collaborate. And then the creative technology as well, we say like, yeah, I can build this and I can build that. And what really sparked my mind at least is that if you ask yourself the question, build this prototype or ID you want to experience in like half a day, how would you then do it? Because then all of a sudden you would lose the whole technological uh, experience. You could use an Arduino if you can code it in one hour. That I mean, that's obviously very normal or allowed to. But if you just trigger yourself in a team to establish this experience in half a day, it's a very good uh, exercise, mental exercise, for people who are stuck in technological uh, mindsets. Mm. Thanks. Thanks. Um, oh, sorry. Thanks for increasing my uh, design vocabulary with uh, Rudy's and unicorns. Um, I was just wondering uh, what the is there um, what the exact um, purpose of the unicorn is in a Rudy project? And so, I'm happy that everyone yeah. understands this really weird question now. <laughs> so the purpose of the, the unicorn and why I brought it into this uh, thing is that we always want to uh, build the end-to-end -end, uh, user experience. So if there is a concept that involves around an app and a physical object, then prototyping this whole experience is quite complex and big. And this is the unicorn part uh, I was talking about. So we want to mimic the whole experience and choose whether we are going to implement technology and uh, build stuff for real or fake stuff with just pictures of an app or a display or something that's connected. But the end point is that you have a feel for, from start to beginning, uh, what it takes for a product experience. So not only the physical feel of it, but the whole spectrum around it. So That's the unicorn is also the person that is critical on this. Like, what is the minimum that we need in the first week? Uh, yes, and this is an exercise we all have to do uh, together. But if you have both a design background and you're a coder, it, uh, you know what's possible and then you know where to uh, select or chop. And that, that's what sparks us like, okay, we're going to build this in the first week or we're going to fake this in the first week because it will take too much time otherwise. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I was wondering, it, 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 to me it uh, sounded a bit like the agile design process where you have the minimal viable product which you also try to build 
-hmm. let's say within a week or two weeks or in one sprint. Um, can you maybe explain what, what the differences are to your opinion between, let's say, the process you described and maybe the uh, minimal viable product, or is it more or less the same? Um, <coughs> we don't create minimal viable product, uh, products, we create minimal lovable products. <laughs> so what's the least amount you have to do in order for you to like a, a project? So we don't believe in weeks or in sprints, so if something uh, has to last two weeks in order to create that right experience for a, a product, then it takes two weeks or three weeks. I think in terms of Rudy, Rudy is a more a, a technical approach, so that could be a minimal viable product in uh, they're quite similar but Rudy is not the end goal of this uh, pro it's only a means to an end thanks is there any last questions otherwise uh... oh, no. thanks for your presentation <laughs> I was wondering with the whole no, rise of design it's thinking, do you ever ch people come to you asking for a prototype? Do you ever challenge them on whether what they are asking is actually the right thing? Because I was thinking about the idea uh, of yeah, this video way back where they designed a shopping cart, mm -hmm. and in the first two weeks, they all, they do only market research and they talk to customers. I, I'm wondering where that fits in this process. So, every time a client comes to us, we always challenge them on a design brief, and we don't just, we're not just builders, we try to think along and think along in which experience they want to achieve with a, a, a project. And if we figure out that what they want is not very user centered, we uh, push back a lot and try to let them see the other side of the story, like, no, wait. Uh, have you thought about this? And if a, if a client is very persistent in uh, having something built that's in his mind, we also sometimes do a side project where in one case we build what he wants and on the other side we do our own internal project to create a more user-centered uh, concept and then we show him in the, in the end or along the way to make them realize, like, no, this is not the, the best approach you have. You should start thinking about terms in, uh, mm. in other ideas and concepts. <laughs> so it's always, we always challenge the client for uh, these kind of things. Do you involve the user in the end? Because you're building it for, for the user, I guess. Yeah, so a lot of prototypes are built for uh, user tests, but we don't do user research, so every Prototype and experience is like speculative design. Mm. We, we design from an assumption and along the way we feel and experience like what's right and what's wrong, but uh, in the end the client will uh, take it upon themselves to test it with the user. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michiel. Thank you.